It's been a while since I reviewed Nomad BSD 1.3.2 and I think it's time I looked at Nomad BSD 1.4.0 release candidate 1. First thing you'll notice when you go to the Nomad BSD website is that the sheer number of options of where to download and what to download. As you can see, there's got Mac versions. You've got different places in the world to download from. So you pick the nearest and 32 bit as well. Okay, nothing much has changed on the surface really. Uh, the menu is more or less identical to Nomad BSD 1.3.2. But there are some differences, and I'll show you them. So you go down the usual, they've got the settings and the system, utilities, desktops, reconfigure, and logout, etc. And in each particular category, you have an HP utility for scanners, for audio, DSP mixer, audio video, you got Asunder, Audacity, Cantata, Dead Beef, MPV, Simple Screen Recorder, VLC, and XF Burn. And in development, you've got Gini or Genie, QT5 Assistant, and Linguist. For graphics, you've got GIMP, GTCam, Vunoir, and Xsane. For network, you've got FileZilla, Firefox, Hexchat, a nice front end for the firewall configuration. Uh, very interesting Linux browser installer. I'll have a look at that in a minute. Pigeon, Thunderbird, and Transmission. For Office, you've got the full LibreOffice suite, which is very nice indeed. And a nice viewer down there. You've got settings, you've got Air and R, Auto Start, Customize, Desktop Applications. You've got a nice selection of different settings that you can tweak and change. There you go. For system, you've got the usual uh, administration tasks, I suppose. File managers. Uh, a nice handbook. Nomad BSD installer. And the various other essential utilities. And speaking of utilities, we've got a few down here. The three printers. And passwords, etc. You do get a really good decent uh, spread of different things already loaded which is very nice I've already configured for desktops you only just get one but I've added four reconfigure when you make changes log out and update menu if you've added something and yeah it's very nice and pressing the middle button gives you the chance to go to the uh, new desktops if you've added any And here is the file system and top. With very little memory usage actually, very nice. Look at that. It's lovely. So yes, it seems like uh, Nomad BSD is as light as always, which is good. And we'll have a look at Octo PKG. It's uh, nice and snappy. I'll just see what updates are available. Of course, the speed of this depends on your internet connection and your USB drive. It's a lot faster if you install it to hard drive or SSD. But yeah, that's not bad. Nearly 32,000 packages. And for Office, we'll have a look at LibreOffice. Look at the version. See, for me, an out-of-the-box OS really should have an Office suite of some kind. I know there is a move to, in some circles, to perhaps uh, not include one, but I think you should. Just in case you've got any... If, if say, for instance, your session can't be held online, then this is an essential way to get work done until you get online. It's my opinion, that's all. 
Very nice. We'll just uh, do that again. I don't know what happened there. There you go. And for those interested, there's the version. Very nice. Close that. No save. Feel like Nomad BST, it's got a writable uh, partition so that you can save it to the home, which is nice. Now, the next bit uh, caught my eye, and I, this is fantastic. I couldn't get this working, probably because it's on a US the stick, you know, I'm doing it via a live version. Or maybe because it's a release, early release candidate, I don't know, but this, if they can get this working, is a fantastic development. Give you the option. So this program installs the Widevine capable Linux version of Google Chrome or Brave. Both browsers allow you to use web services like Netflix, Prime Video and Spotify. So you install these and there's a good chance you could actually watch the things on a free BSD based system. Isn't that brilliant? Excellent. Well, I haven't looked at Nomad BST for a while, six months since I reviewed the last version. Um, and things have changed and haven't changed, which is good. You know, there's an evolutionary path that which they're following. Uh, it's a mobile OS, and I think it achieves that fantastically. Um, it does everything that you want it to do. You know, you just plug in the USB stick into a suitable machine, boot it up, and you've got a FreeBSD working environment. You can save your work, and browse the web. When you finish, close things down, save things, safely uh, eject the uh, USB, and bada bing bada boom, and there you go, work is done. Take it to a completely different machine, and carry on. So this is a release candidate, I don't usually like to review release candidates, although I do um, I do cover free BSD from time to time. But yes, um, it's looking very good. I don't know how many release candidates they'll have, there'll probably be three, and when uh, it's released, I don't know. But, for the time being, it's an excellent update, and things are looking good indeed, especially the uh, Linux browser option. Now, if they can get that to work, that's uh, it's a kind of a game changer, and I can see that perhaps moving over to the other FreeBSD-based OSs, like Hello System or GhostBSD, and which I know that GhostBSD is working on getting games to run uh, using that, but it'd be good if you got a browser option too, and maybe even included in the FreeBSD port, so we'll see. Anyway... It's just a quick video, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.